Mr. Chairman, ladies, gentlemen, friends and colleagues, who I have to say look absolutely stunning today, by the way. <laughs> really amazing. Uh, I think considering this is a, a vote of thanks, uh, I should start by actually thanking everybody who has uh, taken some sort of part in organizing this graduation ceremony. Uh, year after year, it's just more spectacular, and the music was absolutely fantastic. So I think a round of applause for all those who organized this today. <laughs> Gary Trudeau once said that graduation speeches were invented largely in the belief that outgoing university students should never be released into the world until they had been properly sedated. <laughs> Throughout my year here as your co-president for finance and communications, I've been trying desperately to muster up the courage to write a speech that would, in true SOAS tradition, buck this trend. I was going to summon the wisdoms of the ages, the rhetorics of the great leaders, the passions of the masses, and the odd crack at the management, <laughs> but time passes very quickly indeed, and 24 hours to go before this graduation ceremony commenced, I had achieved absolutely nothing. <laughs> Serving to rile the raging horde of butterflies in the proverbial stomach, I kept remembering the first time I scaled those white steps as a fresher back in 2006. Pangaea had not yet split as I queued that golden mile to enrollment. What could I possibly say? to serve justice to all that time spent slaving away in the library over five dots and squiggles, that meant 50,000 words in translation, or to the moments watching the pale London dawn blind the screen of my laptop, inducing the realization that that essay was not going to be handed in at 1,600 hours, <laughs> or the precious time spent in the bar during the twilight of closing time, time after time, avoiding both of the above. So I decided to do what all of us here have done in our hardest hours, with impending doom gathering mass this side of the horizon and the quest for knowledge turning into the battle forevermore, I consulted the sage and the oracle, the tomb of all memory and the tome of all that is to be. I logged onto Facebook. <laughs> now, funnily enough, Amongst the battalion of invitations for me to divulge what my favorite philosopher or actor or kitchen appliance is, the answer to all three being Hobbes, uh, inspiration did in fact arrive in the form of a timeline. For I remembered a phrase I learned something, uh, sometime in the last six years here, perhaps in a literature class or possibly in a poetry reading in a particular bar in uh, Damascus, or maybe one of the visiting academics of the University of Smoking Area verbally vomiting it on me at some point, either way, Gibran Khalil Gibran had written, if in your thought you must measure time into seasons, translators' boxes arranged down a thin blue vertical line, uh, let each season encircle all the other seasons, and let today embrace the past with remembrance and the future with longing. So as I stand here today and address you as fellow alumni, I intend to embrace the past and remembrance by longing for what's next. Now, once the sandwich tables outside have been ravaged, the Pim's tent has been pillaged and the mortar balls rocketed. At some point in the next day or so, you too will start thinking about the future. What is next? Where am I going? Who am I going to meet? Was this whole thing just a massive waste of time and money? <laughs> and how on earth does one actually get to this supposed Japanese roof garden we have? <laughs> Now, the answer to all the above is patience. <laughs> we, as Soassians, have been trained to deal with this term patience in all our walks of life here. Whether we have had to indulge in, uh, in patience for an academic epiphany, or in handing in said academic epiphany to the faculty office desk, or whether it's the patience of friendship, of love, of being let down, or of being pleasantly surprised, I have often said that this institution runs on one fuel alone, and that is trust, patience is the systole and the diastole of trust and is indeed the heartbeat of SOAS. This isn't a speech to freshers or to year abroad students. This is a speech to a group of young men and women of all ages that have just passed through one of the most bizarre and sometimes trying places on academic earth. <laughs> 
SOAS has not the ancient cloisters and manicured lawns of centuries-old colleges, nor does it have the aesthetics of any normal sort of university career. We have as yet no theatre for our actors, no sports pitches for our players, no daycare facilities for our parents, and a name that is not as well known as uh, some of our sister colleges. Added to this, we are in the perfect storm of a government wishing to see us play the games of growth, without knowing what growth actually means or entails. But apparently we have a Japanese roof garden. <laughs> and a yurt. <laughs> All this has required patience for the mass of burgeoning intellectuals you are to get to where you are here today. However, I said yet, because this university is on the horizon of something special. Yes, we are working on our student experience, our estate, our brand, our place in the league tables, our registration systems, our food, our drink, our shoe size, etc. But that's all secondary at the very most. For what will bring the biggest change to our alma mater is you. Indeed, be the change you wish to see is one of those magic phrases that symbolizes our time here at SOAS. You as graduates have said you go to SOAS for three, four, five, even six years. <laughs> You now say you went to SOAS. And you shall say this for the rest of your lives. <laughs> Students at other universities in your position will forever rely upon an institution to bolster their confidence. But this institution relies on you. And that's the way it really should be. Sitting in this room here today, we can and must have all the confidence of seeing a future uh, Secretary General of the United Nations or founder of the most successful microfinance firm of the 21st century, or the solutions to the world's longest wars or bitterest famines. Considering a lot of you are from the Faculty of Languages and Cultures, we may even have a couple of bankers. <laughs> but wherever you go, and whatever institutions you may be a part of, you take SOAS and its reputation with you. You take with you the reputation of questioning, of not being sated with the world that is, the reputation of people, of human beings, and caring about them not as patron, but as neighbor. The reputation of being anywhere in the world and not being far away from a classmate, and above all else, the reputation of patience. Being a graduate today will be testing. There are no two ways about it. Let that patience be tested. You've got this far already. And remember, you may not get where you want to immediately, but you will get there eventually. And remember what this university has taught you, what your professors and lectors have taught you, what your experiences have taught you, what your friends have taught you. Remember the fun and delight of a heated debate or a friendly conversation or a rave or a meditation session. <laughs> remember the classrooms and the bar, the library and the JCR. Remember that institutions might give you the big names, but it is people who give you the big ideas. For as another... For, <laughs> Indeed, another aging timeless poet had once stated, you can't always get what you want. <laughs> but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. <laughs> Let all these memories encircle each other and embrace the future longingly. Now, knowing that your patience might well be being tested at this very moment in time, I would like, if I may, to give my personal thanks. As one of the co-presidents of the union, I'd like to thank my fellow executive officer members for their time and patience through what has been a particularly difficult year. I'd especially like to thank my co-president for welfare and education, Ariana Tassinari. <laughs> we have been more than fortunate to have voted for somebody who symbolizes SOAS at its very best, and all the above tenets of our reputation, particularly patience. And I have been more than fortunate to gain an inspiring colleague and a brilliant human being to call a friend. I think I can speak for both of us when I thank Harrison, Alex, and Keiko for taking on the co-president these roles and all the part-time officers of the union for the coming year and wish them the best of luck. Not that they'll need it, but as experience and patience tells us, you never know. <laughs> now, I would also like to thank all those who have inspired the change I wish to see in myself, my teachers. I entreat them to remember the responsibility and power they have in empowering us through knowledge, and I thank them for having done this with me. Finally, I would like to thank SOAS for making me move grand pianos through small doors in the dead of night, <laughs> for making me cautiously embrace life outside old comfort zones and create new ones, for teaching me more than books could, and for giving me more friends than I could ever say goodbye to. 
And so, as you reach the zenith, and look over the edge, remember one more thing. There's a little blue statue of a man sitting by the side of Soas, <laughs> currently in a glass box covered in not-so-pretty yet temporary buildings. His name was Tiru Valuvar, a great Tamil poet and philosopher once, and as he sat and continues to sit there patiently for us to make him proud, he symbolizes the patience we need as we leave this place, for he once wrote, learn thoroughly whatever is to be learnt, then let the conduct be worthy of this learning. I end unabashedly with something someone said to me on that first day by those white steps in 2006, and I hope you remember it as you to embrace the past with remembrance and the future with longing. May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung, and may you stay forever young. <laughs> Make each other proud to have shared this place. Be happy and go build those ladders, friends. Good luck and Godspeed, SOAS class of 2012. <laughs>